The following is a class given by His Holiness Jaya Pataka Swami Maharaj on June 22, 1981 in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Part 2 He was serving for some long time. Lokanath Goswami. When Lokanath had taken an oath, he wouldn't initiate anyone. But by his service, he was able to finally get initiated by Lokanath. Lokanath said, I won't initiate anyone for three years or so. You see, for a long period he was serving, cleaning up the uh, place where he would go and evacuate in the morning. And by this service attitude, one time Lokanathi stayed hidden. Who is cleaning up my place? And he thought it was Narottam. He said, he's doing this for so many years. He called him in and said, you have, you have won. I am defeated. I must give you initiation. And take responsibility to deliver you to Krishna. He said, because of your sincere service. Even though he took an oath, he saw that how sincerely he was serving, he had to. Uh, give him his desire of initiation, that this was Krishna's uh, desire that he do that. So in this way, Narottam, Srinivas, and Shamana, they were all contemporaries. Actually, Shamananda, when he, he arrived in Radha Kunda, and then uh, he came to Raghunath Das Goswami's Bhajan Kuti, and again and again he offered his obeisances. And Raghunath Das told them, you should go to Vrindavana, there's Jiva Goswami who you're looking for, he'll teach you. And sent him with someone to Jiva Goswami. And there, before he was Duki Krishna Das, when Jiva Goswami saw, very short time he became an expert in the Shastras. And he saw that a deep affection and love for Radha Shama Sundar had uh, grown in his heart. So then he gave him the name Shamananda, one who is, uh, gets pleasure from Sham Sundar. So in this way, these three devotees, they were, uh, of course, to be acharyas, but in their, in their, it's almost like their brahmachari life, you can say. They were together and they were circumambulating the Govardhan, going to Radha Kunda, studying with Jiva Goswami, going and bowing down to Bhugarva Goswami, Rija Haridas, all the different great associates of Lord Chaitanya. Krishna Das Koviraj, who were in Vrindavan and Radha Kunda, Govardhana. In this way, although they were the disciples of different spiritual masters, they were just uh, like the life and soul of each other. There was a complete cooperation. In that time, all the different uh, branches of Lord Chaitanya's tree, they worked simply as one family. There was no distinction that uh, although Jiva Goswami was uh, the, not, they were not his disciples, by initiation, but he very liberally instructed everyone, just a dear like his own younger brothers, or even like his sons, like that. And uh, <clears throat> similarly, Gopal Bhattan, other senior Vaishnavas, Lokanath Goswami, they treated each of them with a great affection. And uh, in this way, the whole movement of Lord Chaitanya was one very big family. And uh, if anyone wanted to do something, they would always discuss with the senior Vaishnavas. It was this type of... No one had the slightest idea to be independent. You see, although each was doing their particular service to Lord Chaitanya, but on any type of uh, decision which was far-reaching or it would affect others, they would always discuss. There was that type of communication and mutual respect and, uh, and devotion. And so they would have Istagoshti all the time, you see. Ishtagoshti means that association discussing the topics about the Lord. So, uh, about this time, you see, the deities in Vrindavana, you know that there's Madana Mohana, Govinda, and Gopina. These are the three deities very dear to the Gauriya Vaishnavas. 
You see, they give their mercy to the followers of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Madana Mohana is the Samanda deity. And Govindaji is the Obideya deity. And Gopinath is the Prayojana, Bigraha. You know, Samanda, Obideya and Prayojana. Well, this is a very high topic. But basically, Samanda means to establish the relationship. Obideya means to actually practice the devotional service on a, uh, you see, in a pure way. And Prayojana means the complete perfection of life. So by worshipping Madan Mohan, the materialistic person, is realizes the relationship between him and Krishna that was lost. And by worshipping Radha Govinda, then, apart from realizing a relationship, then there's <coughs> acting within the relationship. I may know that, you see, I'm your friend. But then if I act as your friend, that's the next stage. You see, I may know that you are my, you see, relation. But then when I act in that uh, relative relationship, then that is the uh, next stage. And the highest stage is pure love. You see, when that relationship is further increased into a, a pure love, that is Radha Gopinath. So at that time, Madan Mohan and Govindaji, they didn't have any Radharani with them. Gopinath, already Radharani had become manifested. So Govindaji and Madan Mohan, they, they wanted that the Radharani should come. And so the son of Prataparudra, the king of Orissa, who was a great devotee, by this time Chaitanya had already disappeared. Nityananda Adoita disappeared. They all disappeared as I mentioned. At this time only the few of the six, three of the six Goswamis were still present, three or four. And uh, like that, so many devotees were already gone and there were still some remaining, few. So the Prataparudra, I believe that at that time he was either already disappeared or in any case he was out of commission. At least he was simply in feeling separation. He had already given up kingship and all that. And probably he had already disappeared in separation of Lord Chaitanya. So his son was one uh, Jagannath Jana, Purushottama Jana. He was the son of Prataparudra. He had a dream. You see that, uh, he heard about actually that uh, Govindaji and Gopina and uh, Madan Mohan needed Radha Krishna deities. So he sent two deities that were there, beautiful deities of Radha Rani for Govindaji and Madan Gopal, Madan Gopal, Madan Mohan. When the deities got to Vrindavan, of course, there was a big festival. Everyone was rejoicing that there was going to be an installation ceremony. But that time, the deity of Govindaji, excuse me, of Madan Mohan, he revealed to the devotees in dream that actually this is not two Radhas. This is one Radha and one Lalita. And one, the smaller one is Radha, she should be put on my left side and Lalita on my right side. So in this way, then they installed, according to Madan Mohan's instruction, the Radha and Lalita with both Madan Mohan. So Govindaji still didn't have any Radharani. So when Jagana, when Purushottam Ba Jana heard, of course he was very happy that he sent the deities and this way there were some pastimes already. You see, that was very encouraging to him. But uh, he was wondering where he would get a Radharani for Jag uh, Govindaji. At that time, Simati Radharani appeared to him in a dream and told him that I am in a particular village you know, Bearpur or something like that, Bedia. I'm in this one, Bergam, something like that, one village. And there they know me as Lakshmi Maharani, as the great queen Lakshmi. But actually I'm Radharani. Nobody knows. I've been here for a long time. So you please have me transferred to Vrindavan, to Govindaji. So then he woke up, he was startled. He went immediately to that village in his kingdom. And there he saw that there was a deity everyone was worshipping as Lakshmi. He was wondering what was the history of this? How did Radharani come here to Orissa? 
So then there was one South Indian Pandit Dev, Brahmana, who was there for a long time, and he told the story that actually, long time ago, there was one deity, one uh, devotee, uh, is that devotee's name? I just slipped my mind. One devotee was there. And he had a mood as Radharani's father. And so he was worshipping Radharani as a daughter and feeding her and taking clothing and just worshipping. But he had a parental relationship with Radharani. So therefore he was worshipping Radharani there for a long time and then finally he disappeared. And uh, one king from Arisa there saw the beautiful deity and moved to this. At that time the deity was in Radhanagara. And from Radhanagara the deity was moved to this present village and the people were calling as Mahalakshmi. Which is true in one sense that it's not a lie, it's sattva, truth. Because Radharani is the full Lakshmi. Lakshmi is the expansion of Radharani only, so she's the full Lakshmi. So the, for the, since that time Radharani has been worshipped there. So then after knowing all these things and Jagannath Jana, Purushottam Jana, he had Radharani taken by this uh, Brahmana to Vrindavan and there was a the big festival installing the Jaga, the uh, Radharani with Govindaji, you see, because she was already installed, but to establish there with Govindaji. So in this way there are so many pastimes going on. You see, sometimes... Uh, Srinivasa Chai was meditating on Lord Chaitanya's pastimes. And uh, at that time he would, he would do worship of Lord Chaitanya in his mind. So he was daily making garlands and offering to Lord Chaitanya. And this way one day he was making garlands in his mind doing that meditation worship. And all of a sudden, you see, he was garlanding Lord Chaitanya with a garland. Then uh, there actually in his meditation Lord Chaitanya appeared, you see. And there Lord Chaitanya is dancing with his associates. And uh, he accepts the garland, you see, from Srinivas. And he took off one garland and gave to associates and said, give this to Srinivas. And that garland, when Lord Chaitanya wears his garland, they're filled. This bees and bumblebees are flying everywhere trying to get the nectar. There's so much nectar on his garlands. They're flying everywhere. And so... When they put that garland around Srinivas, he's being surrounded by all these bees who are trying to get the nectar, you see, from the garland. And he, as soon as the garland touched him, he broke out of his meditation. And he was amazed, you know. And he, when he broke out of his meditation, there he looked. And the garland was still there. And the bees were flying around. He looked around, he was in Vrindavana. And he became very afraid. What am I going to say? What if someone asked where I got this garland? <laughs> How am I going to explain? You know, he didn't want to have anyone you know, to give him any type of false prestige or something. He was afraid, you know, he'd get proud or something. And he became very afraid, you know, that someone's going to come up and he's going to see. Because no one, then anyone could see this garland wasn't an ordinary garland. It was nowhere in the world, three worlds, you could find any garland like that with the bumblebees. And just by smell the aroma, he was practically crying and going unconscious. And uh, then immediately the garland disappeared of his own accord. So like that, they were having different, Narutam was having, and different type of things like that. They were finding deities and having darshan. And this way they were just immersed in the nectar of Vrindavana. Finally they were ordered that, no, by Govindaji you have to take all the books to Bengal. And they were crying to leave Vrindavana, really crying. But uh, they knew that, uh, and also Rupa and Sanatana, they wanted Srinivas and with Narutam and Shamananda to take the books. That's a whole other pastime, how they took those transcendental literatures. So, like this Bhakti Vinod Thakur, he prays that, uh, you see, Lord Nityananda, who is, of course, blessed uh, Jiva Goswami, and how Nityananda had established the Namhat, the marketplace of the holy name, the great meeting place where everyone can come, take the holy name. You see, so many devotees like that, they're like huge markets. They're giving unlimited living entities the uh, nectar of Lord Chaitanya's mercy. You see, just like, although they were together then, serving with their spiritual uh, god-brothers and spiritual uh, 
other devotees and some with their master and some not. You see, when they came back to Bengal, then Narata went to eastern Bengal, Srinivas, he became the Raj Guru and one uh, in uh, of uh, Vishnupur, Raja, Virambira, Maharaj, known as Sri Krishna Chaitanya Das after initiation. And Shamananda went to Orissa and he was preaching there around Ramuna and other places of Orissa. Still today you'll find many disciples in the Shamananda Sampradaya, a branch that came. And sometimes they'd come together and go Purnima on different occasions, have big festivals jointly. Other time they would go preaching independently. You see. And they're always sending to each other letters when uh Shamananda was in Vrindavan, he'd be writing to Hridai Chaitanya letters, how his studies were going on, how his service was going, keeping communication, you see. But in this way, their whole movement of Lord Chaitanya at that time was very much one very big family. Whenever there was a festival somewhere, everyone would know about it. Whenever there was any type of... Uh, 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 success in preaching or uh, in one area or the then everyone in other place they became very happy when there was any misfortune one place everyone became very upset when they lost the books at one point they lost those books the devotees in Vrindavan almost dead feeling that all these literatures have been lost and the devotees who lost them they're almost dead thinking that they had lost the books but Srinivas Acharya was able to re gain them by Lord Krishna's mercy, by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mercy. So, just like that, Bhakti Vinod Thakur, he meditates upon all these devotees, upon Lord Nityananda, Janava Devi, the Holy Dhamma, Navadhi. And so he reestablished this type of preaching that uh, trying to unite all the Vaishnavas uh, with a, his Namhar organization, when every town and village he had the different people meet together in a, someone's house, which he called an ashrama, a faithful ashrama, or Purpanna ashrama, or a Bhakti Kuti, uh, little hut of faith, and they would, of devotion, they would come together, chant in Kirtan, and go out in the morning and street Kirtan also, and study Bhagavatam, and lead a devotional life. In this way, he had uh, so many hundreds of, uh, maybe over 500, he established different Namhat centers. Even one or two we find in some remote villages are still going on. And uh, although it's now over 150 years, 130 years, it's a bit. So now we've also restarted this program uh, in more or less a similar way that Bhaktivinoda Thakur did it in India. That in each village there should be one Namhat center or more. And they should meet together in the morning and chant Hare Krishna in the evening, if not every day, at least once in a week. Uh, and the members should read from Srila Prabhupada books. So in this way, uh, Lord uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, in his Namhat, he described that he had so many these Namhat ashramas or groups. And over a number of groups, that was considered a grouping, was considered of so many groups, that was considered a circle. So over one circle of groups, there was a senapati or commander. And then over so many circles, there was a district commander. Then over so many districts, there was, it was in one state, there was a state commander. And over this whole thing, he had a chief commander. Senapati. The Chakra Senapati, Jela Senapati, uh, Pradesh Senapati, and Mukha Senapati. Different type of commanders or generals. And they were... In this way, he was supervising this whole organization. He took the position as the sweeper. His duty is simply to sweep and keep everything clean from all the mayas that accumulate, all the dirt that come. He has to just keep sweeping, keep it clean, all the uh, awesome pradaya. So over that whole namhat, he had a ten-man committee of different senapatis and devotees, commanders, and they would meet together occasionally, and that was called the panchayat, or governing body. And they'd meet together and he described in his founding charter that whatever they decide should be considered as not different from Nityananda's will. You see, as the order of Nityananda. And this way, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he had 
uh, established his organization. But he predicted that in the future, a great soul will come and organize worldwide the movement of Lord Chaitanya. He predicted. And there will be a worldwide organization which will uh, be spreading the Vani of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and established by one particular devotee. You see, so Bhakti Vinod Thakur's son and grand disciple Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, he also uh, preached and uh, he instructed his disciples to cooperate together, trying to reestablish that original mood that was present when Lord Chaitanya's movement was there. And so he said, work together cooperatively, make a governing board. But they didn't follow his instruction. Instead, they fought and then they uh, artificially appointed one person to be the overall acharya, even though Bhakti Siddhanta never wanted that. He wanted that there should be, you see, a cooperative spirit, not just that one person would independently work. And so in this way, the whole mission of, you know, today is still fighting in the courts after 40 years. You see, even the had the court appointed one uh, guru by court order. The Prabhupada is saying, how can a court appoint guru? Guru is appointed by guru, by previous acharya, by Krishna, not by court. You can't order of Supreme Court, you are guru. How is that? The Supreme Court is a materialistic thing. It can only be appointed by one's previous acharya. You see, and by the mercy of Krishna, not by some materialistic function. So these things are all there in our Chaitanya Charamrita. Prabhupada described how so many difficulties came up and how he tried humbly to carry out the order of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu through his spiritual master, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. So Srila Prabhupada, he established a movement all over the world and we can see that he's the fulfillment of Bhakti Vinod Thakur's prediction. You see. And uh, of course, Srila Prabhupada tried to establish a worldwide, he did establish a worldwide uh, movement of Krishna consciousness and he always wanted that everyone should cooperate with each other, Should there should be a mood of love and trust throughout the society. Uh, but sometimes he complained that at least in the presence of Bhakti Siddhanta there was no disagreement, but sometimes my disciples are disagreeing even in my presence. This is very bad. So he formed governing body and said, you try to cooperate together. Each of you have different responsibilities and areas, but you should come together once a year and review how you are progressing, how everything is going, the purity of Krishna consciousness maintained worldwide. And this way, try to cooperate together. The proof of how you love me is how much you will cooperate in my absence, how much you work together in my absence. You see. At one point he said, if anyone leaves Krishna conscious movement or thinks independently, he can go on without any of the God brothers or any of the other that he's hallucinating. You see, and some people, of course, did leave. Many of Prabhupada's disciples left. He predicted that when I leave, so many will go who are not sincere, who are not actually devoted to me. They are sim- simply sentimentally attached to me, but they don't have the pure, deep devotion. So, in this way, uh, our Krishna conscious movement, we can see how it is representing the branch of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. How although there are today different spiritual masters and different disciples, how cooperatively as one world movement, everyone is working together. Uh, sometimes if there's any, you see, amongst God brothers, of course, there's a different relationship. I remember that although this type of relationship was there where Prabhupada was establishing Krishna conscious worldwide, sometimes his God brothers who are not uh, following Bhakti Siddhanta at the exact same uh, standard, at least from some, you see, but he would uh, sometimes protect us by saying that you should know not to do these things, you see. But then if we were to go and say that, well, yes, your God brothers are not uh, very good or something like that, Prabhupada would smash us and say, you never criticize my God brother, they're my God brother. Just like Subal, Goridas Pandit had a relationship with Lord Chaitanya and his friend, but you see, that was a unique thing. So God brothers, even spiritual master and his God brothers, they are friends. They have that brotherly relationship. But disciple always looks to the spiritual master as Krishna, representative, as like a spiritual father. And so amongst fathers, amongst the father and his brothers, there may be so many relationships. But the 
spiritual master may advise one how to act for one's own benefit. But the son never criticizes the brothers of the father. That is very dangerous. So Prabhupada, he would smash us if we would just... Because the mood would be there, he'd be saying this and that, beware, watch out, they're fighting in the courts, they're doing this, they're doing that, how this is... We say, oh, they're not good or something like that. Then he would say, never... They're my godbrothers, they're not your godbrothers. You cannot say anything against them. I am saying this simply for your education. You just listen, you don't say anything. So, he said, they're also trying to serve their spiritual master. They just made a few mistakes, but they're also sincere. They're trying to do. You see, you cannot, you cannot uh, criticize. And this I'm telling you for your... So you don't do the same mistakes amongst yourselves. You don't fight amongst yourselves and have these mistakes. You cooperate together. That's why I'm telling you. So, this will be most pleasing to Lord Chaitanya if we can maintain, as we are today, this very friendly uh, and uh, cooperative spirit that was there amongst Narottam Das, Thakur, Srinivas Acharya, Shamananda Pandit. Now as we travel all over the world, we see that how here in Malaysia the preaching is going, how it's going on in the Philippines, in America, in Mexico, in Latin America, in Europe, in Africa, everywhere throughout the world. In Australia, preaching is expanding. Devotees are being made, books are being distributed. Uh, Krishna conscious movement is growing day by day uh, because everyone is uh, part of this one world movement that is fulfilling the desires of Bhakti Vinod Thakur, Bhakti Siddhanta, Lord Chaitanya. We have to please the desires of our previous acharyas. That is a secret for success. We have to please our own spiritual master and also the previous spiritual masters and the Vaishnavas. This is the more that we can please Krishna and his devotees and uh, the more we can satisfy all the desires of previous acharyas, the more that our mission will be successful. So this is a great opportunity to be in this Krishna conscious movement. This is one of the pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. This Krishna conscious movement preaching all over the world. Uh, we should be very proud, you see, that uh, our spiritual masters our previous acharyas, they have so many great qualities. And that although we are very insignificant fallen souls that by their causes mercy, they have lifted us up and given us this opportunity to associate with Vaishnavas, to serve in the Krishna consciousness movement, to be part of this Krishna conscious family, you see. So different devotees, they may develop faith in different ways. You see, just like Narottam, he developed faith to Lokanath Goswami to want to have him as guru, but he also had faith in Jiva Goswami and Gopal Bhatta Goswami, but not that they were his initiating spiritual master, but he had faith and respect and offered all type of uh, respect to them also and wanted to hear from them about Krishna Kanda. Like this, there was that type of a mood. So over one person, one would develop such a faith to accept as I want to take initiation from him. And that, it, but still there would be, there was in general an overall faith and a uh, enthusiasm and a, just one big family. There wasn't any type of uh, distinction that uh, everyone was very kind and affectionate to all. When the, finally Nitya, when uh, Srinivasa Charity and Narottam, they were leaving with the books, all the Residents of Vrindavan, all those great Goswamis, they all came and, and they accompanied them for even the old uh, Krishnadas, Kaviraj, and even Raghunadda, everyone, they came from Radhakunda, Govardhan. It was such a momentous occasion and they accompanied the book distributors who were going out for the first time and they accompanied them out to the border of Vrindavana where they wouldn't go any further than that except Jiva Goswami and just like one or two others went with them to Mathura and then they gave their blessings, that go out and distribute these books, go out and preach the message of Gauranga Mahaprabhu. And they went off to the east with these treasures of bhakti to preach uh, the message of Gauranga Mahaprabhu. So like that, you are all taking the responsibility for delivering these books of Krishna consciousness out to the fallen souls to spread to every person Krishna consciousness. May all the blessings of the previous acharyas and the Vaishnavas be upon you so that you can go on preaching this movement with greater enthusiasm and greater uh, inspiration 
and realization. Uh, remain pure. Stay away from Maya's attraction by always remaining pure and humble, or fearful of Maya's contamination. And very carefully chanting, following principles and preaching. Uh, and always hankering for the desire, for the mercy of the previous Acharyas. Uh, and thus may your life all be uh, blessed. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Ram, Ram Hare Hare. Thank you. Are there any other, any questions? How do we get into the smooth of our cooperation? You see, that comes by, you see, appreciating the good qualities of other Vaishnavas. You see, different Vaishnavas may have a different idea about serving. You see, just like one devotee might like to offer Krishna rose garland and one might like to offer gardenia. And so some may say rose is better than gardenia. No, gardenia is better than rose. But these, you know, it's like that type of a situation. But one should see that the motive is in both cases to serve Krishna. So in such a case, there is a mutual type of respect that there's no need to argue over something like that. The purpose is, of course, they offer two garlands. That's all right. That each can do that service. When both the motive and the uh, service is authorized, then there's a type of mutual respect. So this type of love or trust or respect in other person's motive, that the overall motive of a devotee is uh, good, then naturally there'll be a respect. Lord Chaitanya, when he was asked by the Grihastas from Bengal, who is a Vaishnava? He said, anyone who chants Hare Krishna is a Vaishnava. You see, you should respect anyone who chants Hare Krishna. Then of course, then they say, well, some people chant, but they're, they're not pure. And Lord Chaitanya said, yes. So there are three types of chanters. One type are those who chant, but don't follow strictly. They break principles so that, you know, just like we may have people come here and chant, but they may still be eating meat or still doing some nonsense. Still they're coming and chanting. So Lord Chaitanya said, even if they chant, then we still should respect them as devotees. But then we don't, we offer them our respect in our heart. And either we preach to them if we can, otherwise we don't intimately associate with them just like on equal level. We keep a little bit distance for our own protection, unless we're preaching to them. But in our heart, we offer them respect that somehow they're chanting. That means that they're very fortunate people. And those who are initiated, who are following purely, initiated by bona fide spiritual master, following purely, we offer our obeisances to them and call them as Prabhu, as master. And those who are pure devotees, who have got special mercy or are somehow having extraordinary qualities of devotion, who are what we consider Mahabhagavata, spontaneously... Uh, uh, situated devotees, then we respect them as, uh, if we uh, if we meet them, then immediately we f offer our uh, full dhanubhats to them and uh, we accept their words as the words of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And uh, if we're uninitiated, then also we hanker to be or beg to be initiated by such people, for such a status of devotee who is a sp level of a spiritual master. In this way, Prabhupada Mahārāja Chaitanya described there are three different levels, more or less like uh, kanista, madhyam, uttam, that type of level, or basic devotee who is not initiated, not so pure, devotee who is initiated and following, and one devotee who is uh, even more advanced, who is like on a level of a spiritual master, who is taking so much responsibility for delivering other souls. So in this way, if one can see that everyone, however, is connected with Lord Chaitanya, then that type of cooperative spirit, you see that it's, that our goal is not some type of like materialistic uh, football team where we want to get the big score. The, the whole, you see, each person has got his service and we're trying to do, and that's also a type of competition who can serve Krishna the most. But the overall intention is Krishna's pleasure. 
So if someone else is successful in preaching, that's also our joy. If someone else is unsuccessful, has some difficulty, that's our sadness. Because we know that this is going to make Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, previous Acharyas, Srila Prabhupada, happy, or it's going to make them also feel some uh, discomfort. So because we're all serving the same ultimate master, the same previous Acharyas, so in this way automatically a type of a cooperative spirit grows. You see. Even if some misunderstanding comes up, then that may also, that's only temporary, and that by discussion, by association with Vaishnavas, by Ishta Goshti, that will also be destroyed. That is just some temporary type of superficial, due to lack of such type of communication and understanding. Uh, this Krishna conscious movement has got so many wonderful devotees as I travel around, not only the Acharyas and GBCs members who are, of course, or private secretaries and associates of Prabhupada, but temple presidents, book distributors, pujaris, so many uh, devotees around the movement. They are very wonderful, sincere devotees who are who are very attached to serving Krishna and the Acharyas, uh, previous Acharyas. And uh, one sees that this movement is actually an ocean of very great souls who are dedicated to doing welfare work for the whole human society, for the whole uh, universe. So they are very dear to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So when one gradually sees that how it is not that only in our temple there are some good devotees, but there are good devotees in every temple, and that they are very sincere devotees, so we can see that actually they are very dear to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And if we can encourage them in their service to Lord Chaitanya, uh, in the service to their spiritual master, that this will be pleasing to Lord Chaitanya Nityananda. And then actually a whole type of a cooperative spirit, how we can encourage everyone in their devotional service. So when somehow someone is discouraged, that's of course very sad. And so then we try to make a program that a person may again be encouraged. It's just basically communication known as Ishtagoshti and consideration and appreciation of the good qualities of other Vaishnavas. And this creates that type of cooperative spirit. If we lose sight that our spiritual master is the servant of our... just like our spiritual master is servant of Prabhupada or Bhakti Siddhanta. And this way then one sees that how there's a whole chain of spiritual masters, that there's a whole family. So... One thing equal to, two things equal to the same thing are equal to each other. As long as everyone is trying to serve Lord Chaitanya sincerely, so that means that they're all equal. Because they're equal with Chaitanya's mission, therefore they're equal with each other. And this way then a cooperative spirit is there. So of course each person pushes on with his own service. But then appreciates that others are also in this way a total you see, upward push to give everything back to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to, is created. And just like when the 10,000 brothers, the Prachetas, they were all worshipping underwater for so many thousands of years, and Vishnu appeared and said, because you cooperated together, this has given me a special satisfaction. Therefore, I'm personally appearing before you. So, that's something that Lord Chaitanya likes very much when so many devotees cooperate together. There was a big festival when all the devotees came about 50 years after Lord Chaitanya left. And they had a big Sankirtan and they had a, a Abhishek of a deity at Gaur Purnima. This is in a village called Keturi. Janava Devi, the daughter of, uh, of the son of, uh, excuse me, wife of Nityananda. She was present. Achutananda, the son of Advaita. There were so many were there. Narottam, Srinivas, Shamananda, they're all present. In the middle of a kirtan led by Narottam, Lord Chaitanya appeared with Nityananda, with all the associates, although they had all disappeared maybe 50 years ago or so. They all reappeared and they were present and the devotees were... Um, there was, everyone was seeing Lord Chaitanya. Advaita grabbed Achyutananda's son, they were dancing. And there was a big reunion that of those who had... All, even disciples of disciples who hadn't been born even when Lord Chaitanya was there, they were able to see personally Chaitanya Mahaprabhu dancing. See, because he was so pleased that they'd all come together and were worshipping him in this way, cooperatively, he personally appeared amongst them. And then again, he disappeared and they were <laughs> thrown in separation. 
So we can even hope that uh, sometime we may be able to see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, see Prabhupada, even if we didn't have that opportunity up to now, even though he's gone, it, it's not material, he may also appear uh, before us. And of course he's present in our temples, in our worship, in our service, the Lord is there. But we may even see him, you see, with divine eyes, by his mercy. That also is not impossible. Nothing is impossible. We will see him, of course, if not, if not sooner, at least when we leave this body. We will see him when we are serving our whole life. That is guaranteed. So when we understand all this, we have a broader vision. It's, it's only when our vision is, becomes narrowed due to so many considerations which are really temporary. Then we start to see things in a different way. If we see in a very broad, Prabhupada once told me, you have to broaden your vision, broaden, wide. And he just said it in such a way that I felt, though, I'm just looking with a tunnel vision. You see, when I'm Prabhupada is seeing so broad, and no matter how high, much I try to broaden, I can see that still it's only a tunnel compared to what Prabhupada is seeing. The whole broad vision of that every man, woman and child, the whole world, town and village, they all can become devotees of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. They can all be engaged in different ways through prasadam or through kirtan or through book distribution. Be connected with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. As they, again, even if they don't go back in this life, when they're reborn, the next time they'll be closer and closer to Chaitanya's movement. You know. So, gradually we pray that our vision can be broadened. We become Mahatmas to realize our ins insignificant part in Lord Chaitanya's movement has got in its own right so much significance, so much importance for ourselves and for others who we are preaching to. And this way we can be the instrument in the hand of Mahaprabhu. So this cooperative spirit comes as we become more mature in our outlook and we see things in that type of viewpoint. So what happens is that it's like if you have a rotten apple, right? And you keep it in the basket, then it rots the other apples. You have a bad thought or you have some doubt, you keep it inside without bringing it out, then it starts to pollute the consciousness. So that's why we try, we, devotees should, one of the six things is follow the footsteps of the previous acharyas to be straightforward. You see, one should open up and uh, reveal, at least to the, to the spiritual master and to such very advanced devotees to whom the, one can uh, trust to give a scriptural answer. And this way, then uh, these difficulties can be brought out. If one keeps it inside, then that will remain as a type of uh, festering sore. I know that Srila uh, Hansaruda Swami, he was always very straightforward. Whatever is on his mind, he says it. He's very sincere in that way. You see. So... In this way, we should follow the footsteps of great devotees. If we have something in our mind, then we can say that, and that can be purified. Because of lack of such communication, then one doubts and mistrusts others, and then it, it creates a whole type of uh, different mood, which is not conducive to devotional service. So that's why some people, they'll advance faster. And those who are more complex, they're not so just simple devotees, then it may take some longer. Like some people come here, but they you'd say so many things, they always, well, I think, I think it should be like that. I, and they try to put so many ideas, right? So you know they're not making much advancement because they're not listening. They, they're not listening. It doesn't enter in their brain. They're already thinking so many things. They hear something, then they speculate on it, make some other proposal. So although they're coming, it's like very slow. And someone who is hearing and they're actually opening and letting it come in their heart, and then they're trying to understand it. If there's still some doubt, they ask question and get it cleared up. In this way, gradually they're maturing more and more, and they're making advancement. 
So that's the way of actually understanding, not by just a challenging mood, but with an idea that I want to understand. And if there's something I can't accept or I can't fully understand why that should be, then we again ask questions. But those you can see who are not so simple, that even though they're coming, you know, it's very slow. Right? There's a few people like that here. So that's there amongst Indian people. They, they, they tend to sometimes have that. You see, uh, probably because they're, by nature, is very simple. And sometimes when you, if you open up to someone, they, they exploit you. You see. They exploit. So one has to have that faith. But, of, of course, within class or within Istagoshti, there should be no worry about that. Yeah, that, that's dangerous. That's why like Ishtago stage has to be kept amongst uh, Krishna conscious, more advanced people. Shouldn't be. That's all a materialistic type of attachment. Would he refer to younger devotees who ask for Pardon? Would he refer to the new Bhagavad Gita? He might. Might. Not that that person is an authority. Might do so for different reasons. Might do so just to find out what he's thinking. Might also do so if it's a practical kind of thing. Say, for instance, you're trying to ask how to fix the vehicle. He may be a mechanic. He might ask his opinion. You see, or it might be about preaching in a particular place. Someone may know about that place.